Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at solving simultaneous equations. So simultaneous equations uh, is when you have two equations and two unknowns. In other words, there are two things that you don't know the value of in the equation. So let's say you had 3x plus y equals 7 and 2x plus y equals 6. We have two equations. We don't know the value of x or the value of y. Uh, so we have two equations, two unknowns. The method we're going to use for this is what's called the elimination method. And to understand the elimination method, you need to get clear on when terms cancel. Okay, because that's part of it. We need to cancel out either the x's or the y's. Um, and we need to manipulate the equations so that we can do that. So just a little background on cancelling. Say, for example, you have a positive 2x. Okay, well, if you then have a minus 2x, 2x, take away 2x, is, of course, nothing. Zero. It cancels itself out. So if you had a positive 5x, in order to cancel it out, you would need a minus 5x. And then 5x take away 5x is, of course, zero or nothing. If you had maybe a minus 10x and you wanted to get rid of that or cancel that, then in order to cancel out a minus 10x, you would need to add 10x. And then minus 10x, add 10x, would give you, of course, zero. So it would cancel it out. Okay, so back to this original example. We have 3x plus y equals 7 and 2x plus y equals 6. Now we've some steps in this procedure, okay? So the first step is we're going to look to cancel the x's or the y's. So we're just going to make a decision on which ones we are going to try cancel. So if you look at what we have here, we have three x's and two x's here we have a plus one y and a plus one y here and if you remember in order for them to cancel you have to have two things key you want to have the same amount of either x's or y's so if you have three x's here ideally you need three x's here and one a plus and one a minus in order for them to cancel so they're the kind of two main things from the cancelling we need to figure out. If you have a 3x, ideally you'd want a minus 3x here. If you have a plus y here, ideally you want a minus y here, if you want them to cancel. So by having a little look at what it would take in order to cancel the terms, it's quite clear from here that it's going to be easier to cancel the y's. They're not set up to be able to cancel as they are, but it's going to be easiest to work with the y's because we already have the same amount in each. So in your step two, once you've got your step one, in, that is just your decision. You're just looking at whether to cancel the x's or the y's. Make your decision on which is going to be easier to work with. Then, then what we're going to look to do is manipulate the equation as you need to, remembering that if you need to make a change to one term, you must make the same change to all terms in that equation. Okay, so looking back at this example here, I have a plus y here. If I want these to cancel, I need a minus y down here. So I need to make a change to the second equation. So leave the first equation as it is. And the change I need to make to the second equation, uh, since I need to make that a minus y, I'm going to multiply that whole bottom line by minus one. Because if I want to make that a minus y, I'll need to multiply by minus 1. Minus 1 times y is minus y. But if I need to make that change to that term to keep the equation balanced, I have to do the same thing to all the terms in that equation. So minus 1 times 2x is minus 2x. Minus 1 times y is minus y. And minus 1 times 6 is minus 6. And there we go. So that's steps one and step two. I've looked to cancel the y's. I made the decision that that was easiest. And then I manipulated the second equation so that these are set up to cancel. So now step three. So step three is I need to add the equations together. And step four is to then solve them.
So add the equations together. So when I'm adding these two equations together, I have 3x minus 2x, which of course is just 1x. And then y, take away y, of course, is nothing, which is what you want to have happen, equals 7 take away 6 is 1. And there we go. It's actually solved already. x is equal to 1 is my first answer. Okay, so step 5 then is to now substitute the answer back into one of the original equations and then we will solve. So x equals 1, I'm going to go with the original top equation because we didn't change that. 3x plus y equals 7, it's just as easy as the second equation. Um, and I'm going to sub it in, so instead of x, I'm going to sub in 1 plus y equals 7. So I have 3 times 1 is 3 plus y equals 7 and then I'm going to take away 3 from both sides and I get y is equal to 4 and that is my second solution. x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 4. Okay, so we're going to try another question. So we have x plus 5y is equal to 21 and x plus 2y is equal to 12. If you're feeling confident, press pause and see how you get on with this one. Okay, so step one, we're going to look to cancel the x's or the y's. So quite clearly, it looks like we've the same amount of x's. It's going to be easier to work with the x's than it is with the y's. So in order for the x's to cancel, if I have one x there, Ideally, I need a minus 1x here. So I need to manipulate the second equation. And again, I need it to be a minus. So I'm going to multiply that whole second equation by minus 1. Remember, if I want to change that term in some way, I need to do the same change to all terms in the equation to keep it balanced and to keep the values of x and y the very same. So write out the top equation again. That one isn't changing, but the bottom equation, we're multiplying each of the terms by minus 1. So x times minus 1 is minus x, 2y times minus 1 is minus 2y, and 12 times minus 1 is minus 12. Step 3, we're going to add the equations together. So x take away x is nothing, so they cancel. 5y take away 2y is, of course, adding them together, is 3y. 5y take away 2y is 3y equals, and 21 take away 12 is, of course, 9. So now we need to solve this equation. And in order to get y on its own, to get rid of that 3, we're going to have to divide both sides by 3. So we have y is equal to 9 divided by 3, which is 3. And there's our first solution. Step five, we're going to take this solution, this answer, and we're going to sub it back into one of the original, um, whichever is easier. Um, I'm going to go with the, the bottom one, okay? Just, they're, they're both probably as easy as each other, but again, I'm going back to it in its original form. Um, I'm going to use x plus 2y equals 12, and I'm going to sub the y in here. So instead of x plus 2 times y, it'll be x plus 2 times 3 equals 12. That gives you, of course, 2 times 3 is 6 equals 12. Take away 6 from both sides, and I get, of course, x is equal to 6. And there is your second solution. Okay, so try this question. 3x plus 4y equals 20 and 2x plus y is equal to 10. So we're going to look to cancel the x's or the y's. So we want to see which might be easiest to be able to manipulate to cancel. Um, pause the video if you think you want to give this one a go yourselves. Otherwise, listen on and we'll go through it now together. So in this case, it's going to be easier, I think, to work with the y's because we have a 4y here. Uh, it would be easier to just manipulate the second equation so we get a minus 4y here. Okay, so in order to do that then for our step two, if we want a minus 4y here, we'd have to multiply by a minus 4. And of course, if I want to do that to that term, I need to do it to 
everything in the equation. So we're going to multiply the whole bottom equation by minus 4. So the top line stays the same. And the bottom line becomes 2x times minus 4 is minus 8x. Y times minus 4 is minus 4y. And 10 times minus 4 is minus 40. Now, next step 3, add the equations together. 3x minus 8x is, of course, minus 5x. 4y minus 4y is nothing. And 20 minus 40 is minus 20. So divide both sides then by minus 5. And we get x is equal to 4. Minus 20 divided by minus 5 is 4. And so we get the first answer. Step 5 then, we're going to substitute in that x is equal to 4 into one of the originals. And I'm going to go with the bottom one. The bottom one is an, an easier equation. So uh, 2x plus y equals 10, and I'm going to sub the 4 in for the x. So instead of 2 times x, it'll be 2 times 4, plus y equals 10. 2 times 4 is 8, plus y equals 10, minus 8 from both sides, and that gives me y is equal to 2. And that is your second solution.